Safety switch wire on the wiring harness is used to allow communication with the ECUs while at the same time allowing the unit to be worked on without the monitor able to control the functions of the unit. This screenshot where it says transport mode is what will be displayed on the monitor screen when the safety switch loops are removed. The safety switch wiring or safety caps if you notice on your monitor, it could say if a warning comes up that says transport mode, that's the safety switch. Safety switch allows us to work on the unit safely while no one is operating by simply removing the loop caps. Everything's under load, but nobody can function anything. So on both tank and drill, there'll be one of these little loop caps. So we'll start at the stack of ECUs. None of the safety switch wiring goes any further towards the cab, so it's all between the two ECU stack and breakouts. In the ECU breakout, there's going to be a small blue wire in each comms connector. Pin 17, it's hard to see in the video, but if you look at pin 17, it's blue. So all three connectors are going to have that, because all three can individually be put into that safety loop if that wire was to be removed, which probably isn't recommended. They come back and they splice off into one single wire. So when you get to the actual breakout, we're down to one single blue wire that's in pin two. That flows through the connector on pin two and the blue wire is going to run all the way back from their central ECU stack to the ECU stack on the back or the rear implement harness. Also with that safety switch, we have a purple and a red on the front connector. The red wire supplies power to the safety switch circuit and it comes from the high current in this main trunk harness. The purple wire simply runs between this safety switch plug and the safety switch plug at the back. So if we follow from here and we had all this loom open, we'd be able to follow that blue and purple wire all the way through. So we'll just follow that back. It's going to go all the way back to our rear and front implement harness connections. And here you can see the purple and the blue wires in these, contain in these connectors. They go through that and they come up to the ECU breakout where that blue wire is going to splice off. So the one set that's going into the ECU breakout, which goes up, splits off three ways, and it goes into our each comms plug on that pin 17. Where it splices, it goes into the safety switch breakout on this rear implement harness, and you've got the purple wire that came from the front safety cap, and it comes back and it now loops in with the blue safety cap so it's providing power between that ECU and this ECU so that it knows that it should be on and safe for everything to work. If for some reason you lost transport mode and you had your two caps on there could be a break in this wire between this point and that point up there. You'd have to Use an ohm meter and you could check between here and your connections at the front of the implement harness and at the rear of the implement harness to your other plug. One thing you can do is if you can't find the break, you can just run a wire from here all the way up to the other safety switch and bypass the wires in the harness to get your customer going. If you have an ECU, only one single ECU that says it's in transport mode, so we'll say that uh, CM42 is in transport mode. If one, if CM41 and our EM24 both aren't in transport mode, that would indicate a problem with our breakout harness. You could simply take that comms plug from one of the other two ECUs and swap it in there and see if that transport mode error follows that plug and then you know for sure that you have a problem here. If it doesn't follow this harness, there's a possibility that problem could be in your ECU. Yay, now I'm done.